It is Rick and Sasha. All right. Beautiful Friday. A lot of stuff going on. Super Bowl 53. It is the weekend. Everybody is in the city. And here's one. Uh, this man is a, a former drug kingpin. Mm-hmm. But he's turned his life around completely. My homeboy. Mm-hmm. Freeway. Ricky Ross. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good, man. good to see you again. Hey, Ricky. Likewise, Rose. likewise. How you doing? I'm doing good, sweetie. How you doing? Oh, wow. Okay. You woke me up this morning. I mean, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you hear that, does it does it bother you when people say former drug kingpin? And no, nah, it is nah. what it is. Right? I have I've embraced my past. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And what I did is I took my past and I used it to assist other people. Right. And that makes it. More like, to me, that I was a scientist experimenting with the game so that I could help other people. Right. So when you think about your path, do you believe that that's the path God wanted you to walk down so that you can be where you are right now? No, I used to believe that. Some people say that. I used to believe that. Right. Um, I believe it was the past that my neighborhood was playing. Uh Uh-huh. And you know what they say, how you're a product of your environment? Right. Right. Uh, I believe that that's what that was. That wasn't uh, me molding myself or God molding me or 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 something just happened. I consciously made a conscious decision that I wanted to be a drug dealer. Right. And why? I mean, was it is it true because when you were a young kid that you couldn't really focus in school and uh, definitely that definitely played a part. Right. Uh, uh, but that is not the only reason. Uh, okay. You you know when 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 you're young and your mind is impressionable. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was about fourteen or fifteen, one of my cousins took me to the theater and right. uh, I saw this movie. Mm-hmm. And it was a black guy on the on the on the screen, which you know you don't get to see many black guys on the screen. Okay, but this guy was on the screen and he was super bad. Right. And when I left the theater, my hero went from being Arthur Ashe to being Super bad. Yeah. Wow. Which the guy name was, they was calling him Superfly at the time. Superfly, yeah. Yeah, so when I left the theater, I wanted a Cadillac with a big grill. I wanted the white wall tires. Uh, I didn't want my Datsun no more. You know, I, I was driving a Datsun at the time. Right. And I no longer wanted that Datsun. I wanted a... Diamond in the back, sunroof top. Big in the scene with, with a gangster, gangster lean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So so what, I, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that Young minds are impressionable, uh-huh. and a lot of times they don't or can't determine good from bad. Were right. your parents in the home, both mom and dad? No, uh-uh. So never, n- never, nothing? Never really knew my father. I met okay. my father uh, when I was about 36. Wow. Yeah, something like that. And yeah. your mom? And, and oh, my your, mom was always your there. Your mom was but, there. But, but, you know, mom's... Just, just one person, and, and it's a big world out there. What was it like at thirty six when when you when you met your father? Were, were you angry? No. Were you no, like no, like no, I'm, I'm no, no never angry. Like? I, I don't. Mm-hmm. That's one thing about me is I learned uh, uh, w- when you growing up where I grew up at. Right. I grew up in South Central LA. I'm gonna try to draw this picture like okay. I did in a book. Right. You grew up in South Central. You in one of the biggest, maybe the biggest gang in. In California, maybe even the country at that time. Okay. Um, some of these guys are really violent. Yeah. Can't think really well. Mm-hmm. You become expo, facto, mm-hmm. the shot caller. Right. For all of these guys. Right. You have to be careful because if you get angry, somebody could get killed. Right. And... I learned at an early age is that I really couldn't get angry because my anger could make somebody else trigger exactly. and do something to somebody that didn't deserve to get what they could have got. Yeah. So I learned to control my anger, to never be mad, to never let people see me mad. I, mm-hmm. I might get mad, but you won't. Now, that's, that's very responsible, you know, of you, you know, as a leader. Because me growing up in Chicago, I grew up in a neighborhood where the, the black gangster disciples were prominent. And the Blackstone Ranges back in the day. So we had both <laughs> Very of them back familiar in the day. With them. <laughs> exactly. So I mean I, I'm just glad to say I was not a product of my environment. Do you believe that because of where you, you grew up 
That's why it happened in that Well, I allowed that to happen to myself. Okay. You know, uh, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. And, and that's why my, my story right now is going to be so phenomenal, you know, because here I was. I destroyed my life. Mm-hmm. I, I, I literally, you know, if, if you have a chance, I don't know if you ever read the article they did on me in L.A. Magazine. When that article, this guy talks about how I destroyed my life. Right. He was writing my obituary. Mm. And uh, uh, I was in prison, maximum security penitentiary at Lime Park, and he felt my life was over. Right. And, and I didn't know if it was over or not. I had times I was like, oh, you ain't never getting out. and Maybe you're going to get out. And yes, you're going to get out. You know, mm-hmm. these highs and lows. Uh, but in actuality, what he was saying is that my life was done. Mm-hmm. And the federal government had said that the world, as he said in the article, was tired of Rick Ross's dreaming. And um, I didn't think so. I thought I had a chance to remold Rick Ross. Right. When we look at these numbers, it said you sold back in the day over $2 billion worth of cocaine. Are those numbers correct? Mm, they they close. Okay. They so close. when we come back, I want you to answer this. Do you feel you have a debt to society based on your past? Don't answer that right now. All right. All right. We'll come back. Freeway, Ricky Ross with Rick and Sasha. Real People, Real Radio, straight up. Top of the hour, it is Rick and Sasha in the studio with us. We got Freeway, Ricky Ross. He's a former drug kingpin, turned his life completely around. He did his time. He served. Now he's giving back in so many ways, man. Yeah. And I love it. An author, an intellectual. You actually spoke your life into existence 15 years ago when you were in... I we, did. Yeah. It's it's amazing how uh you have to watch what you think. Right. You are a product of everything that you saw, heard, and experienced in your life. And I know now that some things I have to block out of my mind. I can't let it seep in and take over because if you do you know in church my mom used to say, If you let the devil ride, he'll take over. Man. <laughs> it's crazy he just brought up church so many of us that's um where our foundation started was in church Absolutely. but some way somehow we always come back around don't we if the preacher ain't right you ain't gonna be right i know that's right <laughs> that's right yeah. and you've got three books out and one of them the 21 keys of success i'm actually going to mail this to my son antoine to good read. idea good I'm, idea. I'm going to do that and good i idea. thank you for that yeah no problem now someone uh co-wrote this with you what is his name Coley Crutcher, man. Hey, Coley. What's up? What's up? Yo, stand up. What up, everybody? This your man, Coley Crutcher, represent for Jersey in the BX. Good but, morning. But I love that you got that Chicago gear, though, man. I love that Chicago, though. <laughs> yeah. Chicago keep your head warm, baby. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, man, so so how y'all two hook up, man? Man, Coley wrote me when I was in prison, man. Okay. Now, now, I was I was reaching out. All right. You know, and then I had the American Gangster series come out on BT. Yeah. Which I had to know one. They rated me no one on the, on the series, so uh, American Gangster. All y'all that be saying, "Oh, am I do this?" Uh, no, nah, I was number one on on the BT. Right. Well, anyway, Cody wrote me and he was like, "Man, I got a money uh, magazine called Get Money." I was like, "I like the sound of that." <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I told Cody, I said, "Well, man, if you a, a real entrepreneur, you ain't read these three books. Uh, you got to check yourself, right. or you wreck yourself." Yeah. And uh, he went and got the books and. Uh, he can yeah, tell the rest yeah, yeah. So it was it was ironic because I got the books, like Rick said, as a man thinketh, richest man in Babylon, and thinking grow rich. And what happened is, see, my background is in electrical engineering. Okay. Okay. So that's one of the ironic things about the book is that, like Rick mentioned earlier, he thought of himself as a scientist. Uh-huh. So I'm coming into this as a real like four year BS electrical engineer. Right. So I got the opportunity to ride around with Rick after he had been in New York doing the magazine with me. Hence the name of the book, Riding, riding with, with Rick. Riding with Rick. So I'm riding with Rick every day. Uh-huh. Now, I'm not riding around as a journalist asking questions because at this point, I had just finished one of my other books. I have four books also. Right. Right. So I'm out here trying to promote my book also. I spent time with Rick because I'd never been in L.A. Uh-huh. And I'm looking at him enact these principles. So for instance, when he was in New York, I noticed like, gosh, this man is in his 50s, Right. But he's rolling around with me in New York like a man half his age. Uh He's riding around in New York, moving around like New York people move. Yeah. And I'm like, why is this? Why is this happening? Uh Now, I don't know anything about a book. The book is not even in my mind. But as an engineer, I kind of 
I say reverse engineer a product that I saw into principles to how that product came about. Okay. All right. And that became key to health consciousness. Right. All right. So if you talk about when he was sitting in jail, he had the life sentence. Everybody thought Rick was done. The judge gave him life without the possibility of parole. Mm. But some, for some reason, he figured, I can make it out of here. I can make it out. Why does a, why does a person have that confidence in himself? What is it? Mm, what if you connect to your imagination? Okay. Mm -hmm. In the drug game, his connect was a Nicaraguan, which supplied him with the best stuff that he had. Right. But in real life, your connect is your very own human imagination, which we don't know much about. So anyway, we got these keys, which are the keys, they're universal, they're principles of success that anybody could use. And what I did was put them into a format that everybody has access to. And okay. that's the 21 keys so of success. If I if I know Freeway Ricky Ross, he ain't giving you all the keys now. <laughs> not all of them. Right. He ain't giving you all the keys now. <laughs> just, just a sample, just a sample. Just but listen, sample. But is it crazy how you can judge a book? By, they always say don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. And you would never think, you know, you went to school, you have this right. degree. Exactly. You, give, give me some so, dabble. Yeah, you are doing that. Yeah. But we want people to call us and they, fact, want, they want to talk to you. 888-909-1514. People have questions. Good morning. Yes. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Yes. I have a similar situation. And Rick Ross is totally correct. Um, I did 10 years in a level six prison, you know, minimum mandatory of 10 years. I was a drug dealer. Um, I had both parents in the home, and, and, and there was nothing that they can do because the lure of the streets was just more powerful than them at that time. But when I got in there, the first thing I realized was rehabilitation stops with yourself. The system's not going to do it. You're nothing but actually job security for them. So what I did is I didn't go to the weight. I didn't go to um, the basketball courts and stuff like that. I started reading, and I started educating myself on what I wanted to do when I got out. So now I'm not successful, successful. But I've been out for maybe six years. I moved to another state. I got rid of all of the friends that I had that was into that life. And now I just recently purchased me some land. I've been working at this job for maybe three and a half years. I'm about to build a house with no assistance from the bank. I have um, free vehicles. So the, the, the issue is, um, I heard um, Miss Sasha say what could she had done. There was nothing she could have done. It's on that individual, her son, to say, listen, this is what I'm going to do when I get out and move on, move forward from there. I commend Rick Ross. He's totally correct. And, you know, um, I wish him continued con success. And, you know, bless you, brother, bless you. Because there's, you know, more people out there that can do it if they put their minds to it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you just a little bit about Sasha not being able to do anything because I believe that uh, we as individuals can control our environment if we first control ourselves. And uh, that's something that I learned from James Allen. I, I didn't know that before. You know, I thought that. Uh, God had put us here, and, and our destination was predetermined. Our, our, our life cycle was predetermined. I didn't know that uh, people kill themselves by what they eat. Uh, that's why I turned yeah. vegan, and I stopped drinking sodas, and stopped uh, doing salt and sugars and, and, and all the other things that we do uh, as, as human beings that shorten our lifespan. Uh, and it's amazing. I look at my, my, my younger brothers and even my older brothers, and I'm like, they don't move around like I do, and... They taking high blood pressure pills and and so so I, I'm a firm believer now that we can take action that can change situations that we're in. Absolutely, hey brother, thanks for yeah, calling, man. Thank you, baby. Yes, Have sir, a fantastic day. You as well. Right, this man is a former drug kingpin who turned his life completely around. Right in with uh, Rick, the 21 Keys of Success. And we're going to talk to you. I want to answer the question. Why do you think the uh, recidivism rate is so high, man? People keep going back to jail. I want you to answer that when we come back, okay? I got you. Freeway Ricky Ross, Rick and Sasha. Rick and Sasha back in the studio with Freeway Ricky Ross and the book Riding with Rick, The 21 Keys of Success, and Freeway Rick Ross, The uh, Untold Autobiography. Man, you've done real estate, taxes, uh, help people with financial freedom. You also do music. Got a music label, huh? Yes, yes. I got a new artist that I'm working with right now. He's in the studio. All right. Yes, sir. What's your name, man? What's up, man? It's your boy, Not Cool. Straight from Pennsylvania all the way down to L.A. What's up with y'all? Wait, it looked like I was just out. I, I, I was like, that's my jacket. Right. But no, I, I got one like that, man. Yeah. It looks um, that kind of similar. No, no. But listen, how y'all hook up, man? Well, we actually hooked up through this dude named Hayes. Um, he's from my area in Pennsylvania. And, well, he was out in L.A. at the time. And I was still solo dolo doing my own thing. You know what okay. I mean? And I just took a leap of faith and I... 
it, I thought it was about that time for me to just travel to LA, you know, try to do something different. Right. So I go out to LA and I see that my man's Hayes is out there too. So I hit him up. I was like, yo, what's good, bro? Cause I know he been doing a lot of stuff. I've been seeing him moving and stuff like that. So he links up with me and I'm there for a couple of days. And then he just tells me, he said, yo, I got a show for you. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's do it. We go to the uh, place. I didn't even know Freeway Ricky was going to be there. So that was just surprising right there. So when I seen him, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to go hard. I got to go hard real I quick. Hate you, so I killed the show, and Freeway just been rocking with me ever since. So, so uh, Freeway, do you, uh, you, you take these young artists through your training program? Are there any must-dos before they come on with you? Well, you know, uh, I ask everybody that I work with to read those three books. Right. Now I ask them to read four books, and now to be five, but... Uh, uh, um, I really appreciate it, and they really. I'm, I mean, if you don't have enough commitment to read three books, right? Not only that, I'm saying is 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 important, but even the title of the books, you know, and Think and Grow Rich, it says the subtitle says this book could be worth a million dollars to you, right? And uh, I ask them all to do that, right? Listen, man, you, you're self-taught. Um, you're doing so much. Got a bright future. Too much, man. <laughs> exactly. I didn't tell you, we're going to start shooting a movie in March, maybe. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we got the money in the bank. Listen, man. if you need some radio hosts, man, come and holler at Rick and Sasha, right? I got you, I got you. Hey, listen, before you get out of here, man, what do you want to leave the people with? Well, I want to let them know that no matter where you're at today, you can change. It only takes one second to say, you know what? I'm no longer that person. I'm not going to smoke cigarettes no more. I quit today. That's it. It's over. It's done. I'm not going to be an alcoholic again. I'm not going to use drugs. Never again will I ever touch another drug. Today was the last day. That last time that I did it, that was it. And this is the beginning of the rest of my life. Starting right now. Where can I get all your stuff? You can get all my stuff at FreewayRickyRoss.com. Uh, the books, my t-shirts. Uh, also, you know, I started a Millionaire's Club. You can you can find out about that on there as well. Uh, just check me out, man. Uh and I love y'all. Real talk. My oh, man, Freeway Ricky Ross. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, y'all. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. It's Rick and Sasha. At 23 before the hour, we just had uh, former drug kingpin turned author, uh, real estate guru, financial freedom expert, and so much more. Freeway Ricky Ross. And... He talked about his life and all of that Sasha listened to and she's been internalizing. Why? It was so many things that I wanted to say and I wanted to ask. I just couldn't because I was just listening because to have a son so young in jail and being sentenced 20 years, mm -hmm. you always ask yourself as a mom, like, what could I've done differently? Right. The in and out of jail, the drugs, the stealing, the lying. Like, what What did I do? What did my mother and father do wrong to make him go into that direction? Right. And it's hard. Um, it's really hard. And I told my son, you know, we've gone through the counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone to visit him in jail. Um, if you wanted to go to school, I will pay for it, help you get a job. I will make it happen. And in doing all of those things, you know, it just never turned out to do the right thing. Right. And I kept saying, okay, do I want this more than you? The money that I've spent on attorneys and, you know, being sued because of the things that you're doing. You're in my car. You've crashed the car. People have been hurt. It's me, you know, I'm mm -hmm. in, the, in trouble. And I told him the last time, I said, I'm not gonna do it anymore, I'm, I'm done. And then the last time, you know, he decided to, you know, using drugs to, to rob four places in one day. <laughs> do you feel that the moment you said to him that, that's it, I'm not helping you, he just decided to just wild out do his own thing he says i'm not under my mom's wings anymore no you feel like mm -mm. okay i just feel like um drugs too mm -hmm. and and i could see it i could I, I could look at him and say you're you're on something right and let's let me get you somewhere let's get you some help 
because I can't help you get off of that. Right. And I won't give you money to get that. And you can't be in my house with that. Right. So it wasn't that I don't want you in my life anymore, but you got to make a change and you got to make a change. And I always felt like, OK, maybe he didn't hit rock bottom yet mm -hmm. to make him turn his life around. And I said, I will not come to jail anymore. Mm -hmm. Now he's serving 20 years. And, I t and you know, you get the letters. Mm -hmm. I get the letters. I talk to him on the phone. I send the money. And I just don't want to go. I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not giving up on him, but I need him to change. I want him to change for the better. There is no reason why he cannot do the right thing. When you, when you talk to him, do you, do you hear the growth? Do you feel that he is where you want him to be yet? I hear the, I'm sorry, mom. You was right, mom. Uh -huh. I'm praying, mom. And, you know, before when I he would hear that, I was like, okay, when you get out, I want to hear about God. I want to hear about church. I want to hear that you're going to the programs. I want to hear all those things when right. you get out. Not when you get out, you back to the same, hanging with the same people. You got to change your life. You can't have the same friends. You can't go to the club. You can't have a drink. You can't smoke a cigarette. It leads to other stuff. Right. You know, normally in, in Divas Diamonds, you give words of wisdom and I want you, I want you to do that because I mean today was really about you but I want you to also in these tears mm -hmm. I want you to help other women out there other mothers that are going through the same exact thing and just give them some words when we come back okay I could do it now if you want me to yeah engineer's saying we gotta oh. cut it off right now <laughs> okay. so when we come back if you're going through the same exact thing Sasha's got some I words got, of wisdom I she wants to share some. with you let me go Take this eyelash off real quick, y'all. You just have one eyelash? Yeah, these lashes are coming off, child. Let me get this face together. <laughs> it's Rick and Sasha, part two of Divas Diamonds. So, Sasha. Yes, I'm, I'm feeling better. You better? Whew, yeah. One eyelash and everything. <laughs> <All right. laughs> So right. a lot of women have been through it. Yeah. Let me let me just say this. Um, and if it's coming out harsh, I apologize. But sisters, it is some things that we're really going to have to start doing. As a single mom and single mothers out there, so many times those relationships just don't work. Mm. And do you know what we end up doing? We carry that on to our children. We're mad. We're bitter. We're disappointed. We hate his guts. Don't talk to my child. You take all of that negativity and you bring that on to your children. And guess what they call you? What? A bag lady. You, no, that ain't really what they call you. Okay, but that, but that was the nice word to it. Yeah. Booze, can I tell you something? You got to stop doing that. First of all, just forgive. You First of all, you picked them. Okay. Mm -hmm. It did not work out. Do the best thing for your child. Stop not letting your kids see their father. Stop it. It's not a good thing. It it really is not. If you have a man <clears throat> that is not financially capable mm -hmm. of helping you, okay, keep it moving. If you are and you're and he wants to take the child out, what's wrong with you giving your child twenty dollars to go hang out with his father? Right. What what is wrong with that? You have got to start being the bigger person. You have to speak the positiveness about their father in your children's ear because it's all coming from you. And then when they turn out the way they turn out, you need to look at yourself in the mirror. Absolutely. I, and I'm dead serious about it. Yeah. It's it's us. Yeah. It's us. Yeah. And stop saying that when he broke up, he broke up the family. Nah. You two couldn't get along. He broke up with you. Didn't break up with the child. Let him take time and talk to him on the phone. They can FaceTime him once in a while. Can they please go out and be with their daddy? Damn.